It's time to rethink, renew, and reimagine retirement. Welcome to Retire Repurposed. This podcast is dedicated to help people transition into fulfilling and purposeful retirements. Retirement is a big life change. In fact, the two most dangerous years of a person's life are the year they were born and the year they retire. We believe that retirement is not the end, rather the beginning of what could be the most impactful season of a person's life. So don't retire, become repurposed. Well, I'm your host, Jared Sebesta. I'm the co-founder of Retire Repurposed alongside Ben Tages. Thank you so much for listening today. Whether you found us online, on the radio, regardless, head over to iTunes, find our podcast, click subscribe, and better yet, leave us a quick positive rating and review. If you would just take a moment and do that, we would appreciate that so much. Now, this podcast is all about retirement, but it's not about money. It's about the non-financial parts of retirement, which many times can be even more challenging than the financial. Few people can just flip the switch from working a career 30, 40 plus years, saving for retirement, having purpose and work, and then shutting it off without methodical steps to living what we call a repurposed retirement. If you want more for your life and your retirement, then you have come to the right place. Well, on this episode, we continue our series on optimizing retirement. Today, we cover the value of memories. Memories are the compound interest of life gaining more and more value with time. Oftentimes, the memory of an event can be even better than the actual experience. And in this podcast, Ben explains how having memorable experiences when you are young is a key factor in having a fulfilling retirement. Enjoy this episode. Okay, folks, welcome back. We are continuing this mini-series on optimizing retirement. And this is now episode, I think, number six of this mini-series. So this has been a really fun journey that we've uh, been along with you folks. And each show kind of builds on one another. Uh, before we get started with today's show, which talks about the value of memories, by the way, today's show is going to be a really unique show, something that we haven't talked a lot about, but very important nonetheless. We've got a brand new Facebook group called Becoming Repurposed in Retirement. Join a growing community of people that refuse to accept the typical American dream retirement. Look for more tips on living repurposed, Facebook Lives, Q&A sessions. You join by going to Facebook and search Becoming Repurposed. Click join to be a part of this community of people that are ready to make retirement everything it's supposed to be. Ben Tages joins me on the show. And Ben, several episodes ago, we talked about this idea of the ant and the grasshopper. The ant worked his whole life. Essentially, that's kind of the gist of the story. Worked, worked, worked. Um, saved, saved, saved. The grasshopper did not Uh, And at the end, the grasshopper was kind of touted as the one who lost out because he didn't have food during the winter. But we talked about how, you know, both of them kind of had it right and kind of had it not right at the same time. Yeah, what I remember about that show um, specifically, and it's kind of what started us on this this whole mini series, was um, kind of the way we, as 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 Americans certainly, and um, I think most people look at like hard work as, as oh, it's it's a virtue, and it is, and it is. I mean, it is it is part of life, and when we value hard work, but I think uh, many times it can go too far, right? And in that show, uh, Proverbs six six to eight, where yeah, the Bible says, go to the ant, you sluggard, consider her ways and be wise. And I think we, we like to, to grab that verse and say, yeah, we got to be the ant. We got to pr- prepare and prepare and, and work super hard. And, um, we, we kind of forget that that verse also says mm-hmm. it, it, it's talking to the sluggard. Right. So if you're somebody who isn't working and isn't producing and, and is missing that, yeah, you do need to prepare. And then there are people like that. Right. But on the other hand, there, there is some wisdom in saying mm-hmm. it can be taken too far sure. and you can become too much of that ant where you mm-hmm. prepare and prepare and prepare. And then of course, as, as we talked about in that show, you know, with a three month lifespan that the ant right, has, right. sometimes that preparation yeah. um, never really uh, gets to be enjoyed. Yeah, I think there's always two sides to the coin. The Bible does a really good job of kind of saying one thing and appearing to say the other, you know, it, I think there's a balance there. Um, you know, the Bible talks about um, having grain in your storehouses for next winter, which is great. I think having money and savings, which is phenomenal. Um, but it also says, you know, why worry about tomorrow? Look at how the, you know, the sparrows, the flowers, they don't worry about themselves and yet they're clothed, you know? So there's this balance. And I think, I, I think that's the point we're trying to make. Saving for retirement, wonderful. Um, deferring um, enjoyment to some extent, good. 
taking it too far to where we say retirement is when my life is going to begin. That is bad. And people never actually say that. I mean, the truth is, Ben, have you ever heard anybody say that? But that's sometimes how people live in this mindset. And that's what we're trying to break. Yeah. People don't say, hey, I'm going to wait um, to live. But when you look at how they're living today, right. it looks like it they that. are. They yeah. are, yeah. What's what their life actually looks like is that they're waiting to live. Mm-hmm. But um, we're we're trying to encourage people live today, um, but also live tomorrow. So we're we're trying to do both. Mm-hmm. The next episode, we talked about the time, money, health conundrum, uh, and again, in different phases of your life you're going to have different amounts of these three. Unfortunately, if you live the way that we just described where you're going to wait, the biggest problem with that is your health starts to decline. Whether you like it or not, your health is going to decline with age. That's just the way our mortal bodies work. And we see people pushing too much life off too long. And that's what that show is all about. Then we talked about finding meaning, three ways to find meaning. And then we followed it up with an episode about the foundation of meaning, which is really about purpose. Yeah, you can serve. Yeah, you can have experiences. Yes, you know, there may be suffering involved in life. But if you don't have purpose behind all of those things, then it is kind of meaningless, which is kind of what Ecclesiastes talks about. And last week I thought was a really interesting show. We talked about how retirement is not about the numbers because, unfortunately, in the retirement planning business or really any financial services business, for that example, I mean, it really comes down to a mathematical equation where we're just dissecting numbers. And, man, that's not what life is about. We're people. Uh, we're emotional beings. Uh, we have souls. We have spirits. And <laughs> you can't make life and boil it down into a numbers game all the time. Yeah, in fact, it's uh, I mean, it's very important to look at those as we know, but it is it is not you can't define a person by numbers, and nor can you define retirement by simply looking at numbers. And that's why I think it's so important that um, we're careful not to let uh, too many numbers get into this this our, our mindset of retirement. Because what happens then, Jared, like we talked about, is it starts to become more of our purpose in retirement. It's, you know, I'm making sure that my nest egg looks a certain way and therefore that kind of becomes my purpose, which we know yeah. will leave you empty. Well, if you have your purpose in your bank account, your identity starts to slide that direction as well. And so those are things that we touched on last week. Another thing we touched on last week is that it kind of creates a scarcity mindset where people, if they have this ant mindset for decades upon decades upon decades, then once they actually get to retirement by their own definition, they want to start to live. They actually have a hard time doing that. I think that that sounds crazy. I explain that to a lot of people when I say, you know, a lot of people, by the time they get to retirement, they now have conditioned themselves where they can't spend their money. They can't relax. They can't take the trips. And people have a hard time believing me on that one, but that one actually is true in too many cases. Yeah, and sometimes it's it's just because that's what they've always done. Mm. Uh, sometimes it comes out of a place of fear, like I don't want to run out. And sometimes it's just, you know, I, I'm more looking at, you know, where my what what will my kids have someday? And there's fallacies in all of that. So that was a great show where we, we kind of looked at all of those. Yep. Again, if you're not subscribed on iTunes, make sure that you find us, subscribe, make sure you're getting these shows. And if you've missed any of the last several episodes, again, I encourage you to go back and listen to those shows because you're going to find nuggets, uh, little bits bits and pieces of information and kind of one hitters that you're going to get by listening to all these shows because they all have to do with how to optimize your retirement. So go check those out. All right, today we're going to talk about the value of memories. And like I said several minutes ago, this is a show um, that we really haven't uh, kind of a road that we haven't gone down a lot of. So this is going to be kind of new to us and maybe new to our listeners who are used to listening to our stuff. But we're going to talk about the value of memories. Um, how should we start this one off, back, uh, Ben? Because this is getting to retirement, especially the older you get, retire, uh, memories become more and more of a thing. I think any time you're looking at something that's fading away, right, something in your life that's changing, and um, you, you start to look at memories. I, I'm doing this right now. Uh, yesterday was uh, my daughter's 17th birthday, Jared, and I, uh, we just went out for, for a nice dinner last night and 
man, we, we were talking memories the whole night and, and it's so fun to do. Right. But, but I can, I can feel myself wanting to go back and Mm -hmm. just hold on to all those memories. And we're watching the, the videos, you know, when they were little and kind of, Oh yeah, I remember this. I remember that because I'm trying to hold on to that. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, when I, when I think about, uh, you know, how we've had this great 17 years of raising our daughter, it's all of these memories, mm-hmm. right, incrementally throughout that have made um, her so um, special to yeah, me. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's interesting that Facebook, of all places, um, if you're on Facebook, you know what we're talking about. What happens about every day or every other day when you log on to Facebook? The very first thing that comes up is, you posted this uh, eight years ago, and you know they understand this idea. That's it. By the way, I'm not at... I'm on Facebook quite a bit, probably more than I should, and I'm not a huge fan of social media in general just because there's so much stuff on there that is so negative. But that, that's actually my favorite part of Facebook is when it you know it says, hey, you had this memory or this picture, and it, that's like the first thing that I will look at when I go on Facebook. And uh, again, they're, they're, they're not exploiting this idea, but they're, they're connecting this idea of, wow, I remember that. I forgot about that trip we took. And then you look at the pictures. And it's usually if your parents are age, you know, it's, it's, it's pictures of you with your kids and you're like, oh my gosh, like look at how they've changed. And it's, it's probably the most enjoyable part of, so, of social media that I find. But again, the older I get, I see about myself and I think that you're connecting to this, to this too, Ben. The older I get, the more important those memories are. And uh, man, you wouldn't give those up for the world. No, the, the more valuable they are, right? And and I can look at, e- even yesterday, we're looking at the painful ones, yeah. you know, and I think that's part of these memories is, you know, we, we've learned from the painful ones and I, I can, uh, there's some fun memories and there's some painful ones, but they all are very, very important. Right. And and just, they, they've made her who she is and they've made us who we are. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, if there was ever a fire in your house, uh, what's the first thing you grab? You grab the kids and then you grab the what? You grab the photo albums, you know, and it's kind of a joke, but it's there is a lot of truth in that. And, um, you know, I, there's even a phone, like an, an old phone of me and my wife's. So it's like three phones ago, but there's a ton of pictures on there. And it's like, kids, don't destroy that phone because they're just kind of playing with it and taking pictures and stuff. Like, don't destroy that phone. We've got to get those pictures off there because if that phone died and got destroyed and couldn't turn on for whatever reason, they're gone. So I totally get it. First point we want to make today is we want to create memories early and often. Ben, there's a book out there written by a lady named uh, Bronnie Ware. And she, I think is from Australia. And she's written a book called The Top Five Regrets of the Dying, A Life Transformed by the Dearly Departing. And if you've heard of this book, folks out there listening, um, this is a kind of a, it's, it's a popular book with regards to just kind of end of life thought. And for, I think, eight years, she worked alongside what we would consider here in America probably hospice. So she worked alongside dying people where they went into a facility and this was the end of their life. And so she learned a lot, cried a lot, and just kept a, a journal and, and created memoirs of these memories and what she had learned. But she created a list of five things, five common what you would call regrets um, of folks hitting the end of their life. The very first one, the most common one, is that she heard people say, I wish I had the courage to live a life true to myself, not the life others expected of me. Boy, isn't that hard hitting when we talk about, you know what, I'm just going to retire and I'm going to live and I'm going to do the things that the world tells me I should be doing because that's just the way it is. Yeah, instead of living like your own life, you live that life that you think, right, that that others expect you to do. And uh, what that tends to what tends to come from that is regret, right? We always have these regrets of like the things that I didn't do, not necessarily the things I did, but right. those things that I didn't do. That's what I always hear when I talk to people that are getting up in age. It's like, Oh, I, I regret what I didn't do. And I think that's a, that's a prime example. I didn't live true to myself. I mm-hmm. did what others were expecting of me. What's interesting is that this is so important for folks. You know, you think maybe this is important for people, you know, in retirement or in the latter years of life. I think this is so important for everybody because, you know, so many times and, and until we're really nearing the end of life, we live as if we're going to live forever. And we inherently we know that. I mean, you know, the truth is, is that um, it would be silly to live 
really today as if you're going to die tomorrow because there was just it, life would look just so incre- incredibly different. But lots of times we go through life saying, well, it's just going to be someday. You know, I want to I want to write that book. I want to reach out to this person. I want to take that trip. I want to start the business or whatever that looks like. And we always live with the someday as if I'm going to live forever, which is crazy. It's crazy to live in such a way where I think I'm going to die tomorrow. But it's also just as crazy to say there's always going to be tomorrow to do it. And I think that that's probably what this number one regret kind of is is resonating with. Yeah, because we don't know. And I, you know, I've had the opportunity to walk with a lot of folks that are you know, dealing with health issues, et cetera, and they're getting closer to the end. And, and that comes up all the yeah. time. The, the second one on the list is I wish I hadn't worked so hard. And she made mention that every single guy that she was able to you know walk alongside into death with people had that regret. Isn't that one um, sobering in a lot of ways? Yeah, it is. And again, it comes back to this: I what what didn't I do because I was working too much? Mm-hmm. What did I not um, take time to appreciate? Uh, who did I make not take time to appreciate? And and I think that comes up more mm-hmm. than than any other when I when I talk to people too. You know, generally very successful people. Uh, you know, I, I wish, like, I'm glad I, I can enjoy all of this. This is great. But there are things I would change, which typically is I wish I'd spent a little less time mm-hmm. at the office. And, and again, do we, does that mean that we shouldn't work? Of course not. Does that mean we shouldn't work hard and save for tomorrow? Of course not. Does that mean that we shouldn't defer some gratification so we can have more gratification in the future? Of course not. I think it all comes down to this balance. And tying it back to the ant and the grasshopper, you know, again, you could speculate that the ant took it too far. If he truly did work that hard for that long and he had a three-month lifespan, <laughs> you, know, you could argue that he took it just a little bit too far. But again, I think that, uh, I think especially as Christian men, you know, providers for families, uh, we take it on ourselves to say, you know, under under any circumstances, I'm going to work as hard as I have to and as hard as I need to, um, and as long as I have to to provide for my family. And maybe that's not the the right answer either. All right. So the first point is we have to create memories early and often. That goes for everybody, retired or not. The second point we want to make today is that we have to understand that memories pay dividends. And that is kind of a hot button word because we use that many times in the financial services industry. Yeah. I, if there's something that keeps coming up, um, you know, that, that I've had conversations with clients lately, it's to remember that really memories are the compound interest of life. Mm. Okay. So we've talked about compound interest in our business and how it builds upon it and builds upon it, builds upon it. What I want people to remember is that memories are are compounding interest of life. So they build upon one another. They get more important as people age. So as you're getting older, right, you're looking more and more at that those old memories and you're able to actually enjoy them longer. Mm-hmm. Because, they, they, yeah. don't, they almost get more valuable. Uh, and I think that even you going back to your daughter's 17th birthday, you know, the, the pictures and the struggles that she had many, many years ago and you've had over the years, the good times and the bad, the value on those experiences and memories is probably almost worth more now than they were maybe 10, 15 years ago. Well, they are because we can draw on them for a longer period of time. Mm-hmm. So the earlier in life that you make those and the more that you bring those memories to the surface, the more, the more really, the more dividends that they pay to yeah. you as a person. Have you ever planned a family vacation? And people listening probably know what we're talking about. Like, you, uh, you, know, you say like next year we're gonna go to Disneyland, right? And like the the lead up is there's there's, there's like this build up of excitement, right? And then actually executing the trip, lots of times is not, <laughs> it's not even as good as what the build up was, right? So I mean, there's there's plane rides, there's crying babies, there's <laughs> yeah. you know somebody threw up in the back seat or something like that. We've all had those trips, right? And so when you're in the middle of the trip, you know it's okay. And it's a lot of fun and we got back and we were exhausted and we had to take a vacation, you know, from our vacation and just regroup. And, you know, it takes us a week to just kind of recover. So the actual experience lots of times has certainly value to it. What's interesting about those trips is that as you go on with age, you forget about all the all the all the tough stuff and all that's left is the good stuff. And so what happens is, is that the memories are actually better 
than the actual experience and they grow with time. And I don't think people ever talk about that, especially if you're an ant in this world. No, we, we tend to, um, yeah, bring up those good positive moments so many times and over and over and over. And it gets us, um, it gets, puts us in a better place, yeah. right? Because we can, um, really learn to appreciate those positive times even more as we age yeah again if you're an ant you're going to just put your head down probably say no to a lot of those trips because it's too much work it costs too much money it's going to be too much hassle and you know when the baby threw up in the car seat you know it's like the worst thing ever at the time and then you know in the future it's something that you laugh at and it's something you bring up at your at your daughter's graduation not that has she ever done that <laughs> thrown up in the back seat uh, yeah a few times for sure <laughs> the last point we want to make here today is that we have to start making memories right now this goes to retirees you know if even if you're retired you know again with all due respect your health is going to do nothing but go down the things that you're able to do today you will not be able to do those at some point in the future. It might be tomorrow. It might be next year. So whether you're retired or not, this is a really important point. Yeah, you'll two things. You'll get more enjoyment from them because your physical health will be better. And then secondly, you will be able to enjoy those memories longer. Yeah. Remember, if if you have compound the compound interest of life are memories, you want to get that started early. Mm-hmm. And and it's never too late to begin doing things that you that you enjoy to create those memories with your family. And this doesn't always mean spending a ton of money. Right. And some people are like, oh man, they want us to, be to travel and do all this. And that might be it. But we're talking about just meaningful time right meaningful time with people who are important to you Mm -hmm. the real memories um, almost always come up with some people impact right it's either we did something for other people Mm -hmm. or i was with people who are important to me because then we can we can bring up up those memories again later and talk about them with others yep relationships experiences serving others those are all opportunities to make phenomenal memories we've even mentioned this on the show and this is like taboo in the financial world because the conventional wisdom will say start early save as much as you can as long as you can. Well, if you do that, you're going to take the ant mentality to the max and you're not going to do anything. And by the way, you know, if you're, by the way, we have a lot of folks in their twenties that listen to this show that are young. What's the thing that you're missing out of time, health, and money when you're in your twenties, you don't have any money, right? So if you don't have any money, you're never going to take a trip. You're never going to spend anything that's outside of your means. And we're not telling people to be you know, um, unwise with their money and spend more than they make all the time. That's not what we're saying. But, you know, maybe in your 20s, I can think back to some of the few trips I took in my 20s. I didn't take many because I wasn't making a lot of money. I look back with so much fondness on those memories, more so than even some of the things that I do today. Yeah, and and they maybe weren't that expensive. Right. But they, I'm sure, they involve people. Mm -hmm. They involved an experience of some kind that allowed you to, again, experience something with somebody else that you can go back and relive that memory many times over and over. A couple of shows ago, we talked about the, the, the glue that holds all of this together, and that's purpose. You know, I think that's how we end today's show, Ben. Let's talk about how can we take those experiences, life, whether they cost money or not, and wrap them up in purpose because if you can do that then by the time you get to retirement or get to the end of your life having regrets is going to be so much less of a chance because you were going to be living life to the fullest now yeah i think in every time that that i can think of a a positive memory in the past something that uh is truly meaningful gave me purpose um gave me um really something that i could look back and enjoy it involved uh me uh, with people I love doing something for others mm-hmm. in some way. And it wasn't always like work in an orphanage or something. Those are there. Those memories are there, you know, uh, trips to Haiti, things like that with my, uh, with my kids and my wife, but without a doubt, they involved other people, um, putting others before myself. Okay. And even in the, the travel where we were doing things that it sounded like it was strictly, uh, you know, just a vacation, the, the best times, the most purposeful times involved us enjoying things together, but me looking out for my neighbor. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed this conversation on the value of memories. Like Ben said, memories are the compound interest of life. 
Want to have a great retirement? One part of that puzzle is making memories early and often. If you'd like to learn more and get a copy of Ben's book, Repurpose the Untold Story of Retirement in America, go to our website, retirerepurposed.com. Until next time, I'm Jared Sebesta. Remember, don't retire, become repurposed. We'll see you then. Thank you.